The first module to talk about in Isotope RX can be found in all three versions of the software from Elements through Advanced. It's the D-Clip module. D-Clip has been a lifesaver for me way too often. Production audio and really recording in general can be really challenging, and sometimes audio gets recorded too hot and you clip the inputs of your recorder. Obviously, the solution is don't do that, but if it happens, D-Clip is really good at bringing back some of the fidelity that gets lost when you distort the inputs to your recorders. Now, clipping audio actually works very similarly to overexposing a digital photo. In a digital camera, you've got a sensor that's taking in light, and if it gets too much light, it just says, this is the maximum level of brightness I can possibly handle, I don't know what else is here. The converters in a recorder work exactly the same way. If they're exposed to sounds that are too loud, they'll just go, this is the maximum level of sound I can possibly produce, and I don't know what else to do with this. So you end up getting truncation of information or square waving, which sounds like distortion and clipping. The D-Clip module looks at the areas around where those points of clipping occurred, and it tries to measure kind of the ballistics of the waveform, the shape of the waveform, and approximate what happened in between. That process is called interpolation, and it's basically just a fancy way of saying, well, we started here and we ended here, and we don't know what happened here, but, uh, we're gonna think it's this. Looking at the D-Clip module and Isotope with this in mind, it's pretty straightforward to use. First, select some audio that's been clipped and it will show you where the sonic energy of that selection is displayed in the histogram. Next, you can use the threshold slider to tell the D-Clip module what you wanna consider as clipped audio and what you want it to leave alone. So anything outside of the boundaries of the threshold, it'll consider clipped and it'll try and regenerate it. Anything within those boundaries, it'll just leave and say this is good audio. You can link them together and adjust adjust them at the same time, you can unlink them and adjust them manually on either side of the waveform, or you can hit the suggest button and D-Clip will try and figure out about where it thinks you might want to start working. The quality setting is exactly that. If you select low quality, the plugin will be a little bit less accurate, but it'll operate faster because it's not doing as much math. High quality is the inverse, it'll be really, really accurate, but it'll take a long time. And medium quality is the balance between the two, so you don't have to spend too much time waiting on processing and you'll get a reasonable amount of quality out of it. Now, by nature of how declipping works, you're going to be generating audio that's actually louder than your recorder could handle at the time. So you can compensate for that extra loudness by using the makeup gain slider to turn down some of the newly generated audio, or you can engage the post limiter and it'll kind of keep the same dynamics, but it'll keep that newly generated audio from clipping again once it's been created. You can preview your settings to get a sense of what it's going to do to your sounds, and once you're happy with it, just hit render and it'll generate that new audio over your previously clipped and distorted sounds. Now, this definitely isn't a cure-all for every instance of clipping, and you can also take this too far by adjusting your threshold a little bit too aggressively, but by understanding how D-Clip works, you're going to be able to salvage audio that you didn't think you were even going to be able to use before, and you're going to get much better results than if you didn't have it in your arsenal.